You're listening to the Black to Business Podcast, an educational podcast providing Black entrepreneurs with the tools and resources to start and grow their businesses. We chat with vetted Black entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and business owners as they provide tips and resources to help take your business to the next level. I'm your host, Monique T. Marshall. Hello, and welcome back to another solo episode of the Black to Business Podcast. So I did mention that I am doing solo episodes for the entire month of October, and I must say I have really been enjoying doing these solo episodes, and I want to thank everyone who's been listening and who've reached out to me, shared with us on social media, how they've been enjoying these episodes, and I really enjoy sharing what I know, especially after I found that it works. So in last week's episode, I shared some of the tools and resources that I use in Black to Business to help us create systems and stay organized. I also got a few people who let me know that they've already checked out some of those tools. So I'm so excited to hear that. And then also I wanted to add that anytime I do mention a resource, we do add it in the show notes. So make sure that you check out all those cool things over at blacktobusiness.com forward slash 117 for last week's episode because we listed a whole lot of tools. Now moving on to today's episode, I'm going to share with you my thoughts and perspective on what it takes to run a thriving business. Notice that I said thriving business and not successful business. Now, of course, I want you to be successful. However, as I always say, success is subjective And it's so important for you to divine what that means for you and your business. I believe that having a thriving business, meaning a constantly growing and developing business, will lead you to success. So get it? Because I know a lot of people get caught up in success and it gets overwhelming for people. But let's think about it from a thriving, which is constantly growing and developing, which is a part of success. So... Now let's get into these great tips, which are in no particular order about what it takes to run a thriving business. So first thing I'll say is that you want to understand yourself. And as you'll notice, I talk about knowing yourself, doing what works for you and understanding that a business isn't one size fits all a lot because I really want you to understand how important this is for the health of your business but also for your own personal health, because trust me, it will save you a lot of headaches. It'll save you a lot of stress and also disappointments once you understand yourself. So you want to get clear on your personality and skill sets. What type of leader are you? What are you good at? What are the things that you look for in those who work around you? That's important to understand because different personalities work well with one another. And also you have to understand what your likes and your dislikes are, because this is what's going to show you what you can delegate when that time is right. Or if you're currently delegating, maybe some of those things that you're doing already that you don't really like to do are some things that you can delegate to someone else on your team. So understanding your likes and dislikes is so important. And then also knowing your strengths and weaknesses. So being really, really honest with what are you good at in terms of strengths for your business's growth. And if you're not good at something and you know it's important for you to know, especially if you're a one person team or you're dealing with limited resources, it's okay to outsource or even just take a class or a course on building up those skills. You don't necessarily have to go back to school, but maybe you can take a course or really follow a guru or someone in that industry so that you can develop those weaknesses that you have. Next, I'll say you want to have a proper foundation. So this is so important. We talked about this a lot on uh, the podcast and also a lot of guests talk about having a solid foundation and taking the time to create that solid plan. Because as everything we've mentioned on the podcast, we talk about some of these things will take time, but once you do it, you're done. And all you're going in a lot of times is editing. So you want to make sure that you take that time to create a solid plan and get clear on what your business is about, 
who you serve and what solution you're providing. So say for instance, if you are knowing that you need to create a business plan or a business canvas, just creating it that one time and going back to it every six months, every three months and looking at it. But the main thing is that you've already done it. So when you go back into it, all you're doing is just updating those things as your business evolves. So you want to make sure that you take that time to do those things, create that business plan, create that business canvas, set up your finances. And another thing, a part of setting those proper foundation is you want to create goals. Now, when it comes to goal setting, I say look at it as a 30 day goal, a 90 day goal, a yearly goal, a three year goal, etc. Now, when I set goals in my business, I have this big vision, this big business plan that I have for black to business. But what I like to do is I like to break my goals down into three years, because I think that as business, the business world continues to evolve, just the world around us in general evolves. Some of those things can get dated and some of those strategies that you have or those plans that you have can become dated. So the best way, honestly, for me is I look at it from a three-year aspect and then I go backwards. So I'll set my three-year goals, my yearly goals, my 90-day goals, my 30-day goals, my monthly and weekly goals like that. And another thing I've talked about before, and I want to re-say this or reiterate it here is that People get overwhelmed by large goals and sometimes this can delay your progress. So really making this big cookie and taking like bite-sized pieces of that cookie is the best way to do it. Also, you want to have a strategy for measuring your success. So this is a part of having this proper foundation, having the strategy for measuring your success. So taking and putting in place where you're going to track those KPI key performance indicators. How are you going to track your finances? How are you going to track your users or custom customers? How are you going to track those results? This is all, these are all things that you want to make sure that you set a proper foundation for having it in a specific location. So anytime you need to reference it or someone outside of your business asks you questions about it, you know exactly where to go. So a part of this is also the next point of getting organized and disciplined. So, so important when it comes to creating a thriving business. You want to begin to develop good habits. And one of the things I always talk about is protect your time and practice good time management, whether that means writing things down, scheduling them in a calendar. And also one of the things I always recommend is having a calendar system virtual calendar system that you rely on online and then also having a physical planner we also had an episode a while back that I always think about with Gene Alert what he talked about people always think that they're getting a lot of things done and they're writing down all of these things on their to-do list but when you look at your to-do list at the end of the day what really matters is what did you actually cross off you can have a list of 20 things and if you didn't cross off but only two of those things, something, some restructuring needs to happen. So it's so important to write things down. I'm very old school. I have a physical planner. And what I do personally is I put everything in my Google calendar and then I transfer that over into my physical planner. So I won't dive into another rabbit hole about that. But if you need help with this, check out episode 111 where I share some of the tips on how to get organized and avoid overwhelm in your business. The next thing that you want to do in order to be organized and stay disciplined is that you want to keep a detailed record. So again, checking your finance finances. What are those startup expenses, operating costs? You can either use an Excel spreadsheet or something like QuickBooks to help you track this. And then of course, tracking those KPIs and metrics that matter for the success of reaching your goals. So, so important to making sure that you're on track with a thriving business. So continuously growing, developing is so important for your journey to success. And then the next tip for having a thriving business is that you want to be unique. You have to stand out for the crowd, from the crowd and do things differently from everyone else. So a part of this is understanding what's your secret sauce. Now, there is nothing wrong with having inspiration or being inspired by someone else, 
but you have to show what makes you different because that's likely what people are going to gravitate to. Not likely. That is what people are going to gravitate to. If they see you being like everyone else, what is going to make them follow you? So you always want to think about how am I unique and what is my competitive advantage? Such and such is doing it this way, but I'm doing it this way. And this is the audience that I'm targeting. So that is so important in being unique. And then you're also going to think about what is going to make your clients and customers choose you over your competition, which brings me to my next point of knowing and understanding your target audience so that you can create that thing that they need and be that competitive edge for them or be that top pick for them. So a lot of times when it comes to creating a thriving business, a lot of people think about, I want to create a business for everyone. Or they have this large audience, even a niche, but it's such a large audience within a niche. What you want to do is get even more specific. So what I mean by that is it's important to conduct market research, whether it be surveying your audience, getting on the phone with your audience and making a situation where you have an interview a discovery call with your audience, you know, really talk to them, understand what are their, what are their problems that they're having in this industry that you're serving them in and how can you better provide a solution? And then if they're already a customer, really asking them, what is something that I can improve on? So one of the things I like to say is you want to get on the phone. I do get on the phone. I love video calls. So I do that a lot with people, but also conducting surveys. And when you're conducting these surveys, you have to be specific. They can't be general surveys like what's your age? You know, that can be some of the general questions, but you want to get to the nitty gritty and think about how are you going to measure your success? So going back to those KPIs, uh, those results that you're getting for your customers. You want to ask questions around those things so that you can actually measure your success as we talked about before. Because how are you going to measure your success if you don't know how your product or your service is actually benefiting people? So what you want to do is ask a question like, for example, how has Black to Business been beneficial to you in your journey? How ha- how likely are you to recommend Black to Business to a friend, to a colleague, to an acquaintance? So those are the type of questions that you want to ask. And then maybe if you say how likely and they give you a number, why is that so? Why not? So really diving in. And I'd say also looking at companies that have surveys and taking a look at what they're asking. And that'll give you some inspiration as well. So knowing your audience and understanding your audience is so key. And then also understanding what are their likes and their dislikes. So for example, if you have a product or you don't have a product yet and you're just doing some discovery calls, what you can ask is, what are you using right now to solve X? And they let you know, I'm using this product. And then you ask them, what do you like about that or that service, that product? Uh, What are some things that you wish they would have had or wish they would have? So really getting nosy with your customers in a good way. It's helping you. It's helping them when you create that thing for them. And then also understanding what issues they are having in their business and how your business can actually solve that problem. Now, I'm not saying go ahead and create something. You're not going to create a perfect product like it's not going to solve everything for that person but it'll solve a big pain point and what i mean by that is sometimes we will let our customer dictate what we are creating now you have to keep in mind what your original vision was so again going back to knowing yourself a part of that is also knowing your wife for doing something so keeping that in mind but don't go and totally create a new product because then the question becomes Are you speaking to your customer or are you speaking to someone that's not your customer? So I'm not telling you to go change your whole business model based on a conversation. I'm saying that's why it's important to tailor these questions and be smart about what kind of questions you're creating. Now, moving on to the next point is you want to have the ability to adapt to change. One of the things is that you have to commit to continuously learning If you want to be the go-to source, if you want to have that competitive edge over your competition, 
It's about having the knowledge, being the expert. And the only way that you can be the expert is being on top of what's new in your industry. So for example, if you're educating your audience about a particular industry or service, they're going to want to come to you for the questions that they have. So if they know that black to business is always on top of it when it comes to black businesses, there are a lot of publications that are out there talking about business, but they've built that trust. They, You've gotten their trust with that. So the way that they know that is they're like, okay, black to business is on top of it. They're always looking and searching for what's new, what's happening in the industry and all of those things. So that's building that trust. So committing to continuously learning, the world is ever changing business world is ever changing and that goes back to setting those three-year goals it's a part of also learning that you have to adjust if it's necessary so keep an eye out on the market for new trends and then adjust your business or your model accordingly and within reason of course again not about going and creating a whole new business but sometimes you do have to pivot sometimes you do have to take into consideration where the word is going and sometimes you will do things that you don't like doing but you know your customers need it from you so ability to adapt to change and another thing i'll say on that also is that we get so married sometimes to our ideas that we're stubborn in changing and you don't want to do that because because it could hurt your business. And then the next thing I'll say about having a thriving business is you want to understand your competition. So being aware that you do have competition. If you don't have competition, you might be in the wrong. You might be doing the wrong type of business. So competition looks different. Uh, it's not someone who is offering the exact same same thing as you. But also it might be a matter of where that person is going. For example, I'll use black to business. Someone who could be a competitor could be not just another black business publication or a black business resource, but it could be a resource that is just offering business advice that's known globally. Like I want to understand why are my audience, why is my customer going to that global source? So they might not necessarily be targeting black entrepreneurs specifically, but they are targeting entrepreneurs. So I want to know they're my competition, of course, because my audience is going there. So what are some things that they're doing right? What are some things that my audience like? What are some things that they wish they would, you know, offer? So you do have competition and it's just about defining how that competition looks and then understanding who they are and why they're succeeding. And you may find some things that you didn't even think about. Also, that's so important to look outside for your competition. But lastly, I'll say about this is that understanding that you are also your competition. So when I say that, it means that you have to get outside of your own head sometimes because sometimes it could be you as the leader that is holding your business back. So every day you might be competing with making sure that you're constantly improving constantly getting through those mental blocks so understanding that yeah there are outside competitors but sometimes we're our own competition like we're working doing this inner work and it is a lot of work sometimes the next thing that you want to do is you want to be consistent you want to be consistent and you want to create a plan and you want to stick to that plan now this plan it has to be realistic And you can't go and create some grand vision and you don't have the proper tools in place or the proper plans in place to take the steps to make that happen. So, for example, when you set those three year goals, as I mentioned, I'm just using that as an example. Maybe for you, it might be five years. So when you set those three year goals and then you work backwards, you set your yearly goal, then you set your quarterly goal, your monthly, weekly, daily goal. Now, when you set those goals, you have to think about what are the steps that I'm going to have to take to reach these goals in, say, three years? What do I need to do in 90 days to make sure that that I meet that three year goals? So you might say, if I want to make sure that I'm the go to source for my audience 
in black education, black business education. For me, it might be, you know, showing up every week for my audience is a part of that goal. So being consistent with showing up every week. And then also another thing is, as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm doing these episodes solo for the month of October because I've heard feedback. I've gotten feedback in these surveys. I've gotten feedback by talking to my audience that they do want to hear a little bit more from me. So I think it's important to do those things that are going to allow you to serve your audience and also add value. So it might be not for me, like I might not have to show up all every week of the year solo, but here and there being consistent with saying, okay, I want to do this at least once a month. Or I want to do this at least once a quarter because I came a long way from not wanting to talk solo to, okay, at least every year, I know for sure I'm going to do a year in review episode. And that episode was really popular. Again, we got great feedback. So we said, I just want more of this. So you want to make sure that you have a plan and that you stick to that plan and don't get overwhelmed by the fact that the goal may be so big honestly take it step by step and recognize just you showing up is already the first step and then another part of being consistent is that you are going to earn your audience's trust by showing up consistently I cannot stress this enough that sometimes we think that there are you know we have these competitors that we are inspired by or just we gain inspiration from other industry experts or what have you but a lot of times is that Your audience, you have already gained their trust. And so they're depending on you for this information. But also another part of that is that once you have this audience, you can nurture them. You can also kind of like show them how your business is ran. So for example, I've said this before, we used to look at, okay, this is the best time to send emails. This is the best time to post a podcast. But I thought, I said, well, if, And I'm going to talk about this later. Um, But if I'm doing business my way and serving my audience, maybe what I'll do is I'll stick to showing up every week, one, and then also launching this episode the same time every week, and then also sending this email the same time every week. So for example, we send our podcast episodes most times, we we do between 4 o'clock a.m. and then 6 o'clock a.m., I got that from nowhere. Like I didn't find that online. I decided to do that. And you know what? I realized, okay, first I started with six o'clock AM. People are listening at six o'clock AM. Hmm, sometimes I'm an early riser. Maybe people are up at four o'clock AM. I see it online. I'm up at four AM, five AM. Okay. So I need to see if those people are really up like they say they're up. So I noticed, let me do this for four o'clock AM. And we had people listening. So I just decided that sometimes you're setting that blueprint. And, you know, we have to give ourselves a lot of credit for being creative. So I'll just say that is that you build that audience's trust. But then also at the same time, you're kind of like creating this ecosystem of your own in a sense. The next thing I'll say is to, in order to have a thriving business, in order to be in business in general, you have to be willing to take risks. Because if there is no risk, honestly, there is no reward. So you have to be able to take risks, you know, do things scared sometimes, do things that are uncomfortable. But also in the midst of taking risks, you also want to make sure that you take calculated risks. And all going back to knowing yourself. So if you have set this grand goal, for example, to, I'll use this example, Uh, because I don't think a lot of people talk about this enough and, you know, people taking the leap from their nine to five or from full-time work to entrepreneurship. And if you know yourself, the best thing to do is to start your business while you're working for someone else. And then I heard someone say, if you can't run a side hustle, you can't run a business. Now I have my thoughts on that, but partially it is true because The things you have to look at is if you're working a nine to five or you're working a job, most times you're strapped for time. So you have to prioritize your business. But another part of that is in that going back to what I said is you have to know yourself. If you're a person that is not going to get up at five o'clock a.m. and you work at 
you know, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. or 7 a.m. to 7, you know, what, where are you going to find the time to do your business? So you have to get those habits and saying, okay, even if I can do an hour, I'm going to sacrifice and get up a little earlier because what will happen is those same habits that you have when you're just doing your business part time will run over and flow over to when you have your business full time. So it's so important for people to know themselves and say if you're not the most organized person, you have to find time or find somebody to do it to get organized for you because that's what's going to matter in your business. And I think a lot of times people set these goals in their business to say, okay, when I quit my job full time, I'm just going to have all the time in the world. And if you don't know how to manage your time, you'll have all the time in the world and get nothing done. So going back to if you are not setting and being organized, writing stuff down, putting things on the calendar, how are you going to make sure that you're meeting your goals? So I think that the most important thing for people to understand is that knowing yourself is key when it comes to starting a business. And if you don't know that you're an organized person and you, you're you not trying to work on that before you leap into your business, you're going to be in for a rude awakening. And that's the reason why I say take calculated risks, because if you know you are not that person, jump if you want to. I'm telling you. So don't do it if you're not ready. So taking those calculated risks and keeping it real, because a lot will change and then um, it's nothing wrong with improving uh, and being powerful, being mindful of the things that we tell ourselves every day. It's like, I'm not good with time. You'll start to act as if you're not good with time, but it's okay to say, I'm not good with time management, but I'm working on it. And that's the best thing that you can do. So taking those calculated risks and then knowing that there will be wins and there will be failures, but think of the worst case scenarios. Because if you don't do it, what will happen? How will you know what you are capable of if you do not try? So you have to be willing to take those risks when it makes sense for you and your business. And then the next thing I'll say about thriving businesses is that this is so important. You have to surround yourself with a solid tribe. So this can include mentors and friends. And when I think about mentors, I always talk about when I came into business or just growing up, I didn't have people that were business owners. So a lot of times what I did was I looked to TV for inspiration. Um, Now it's the internet. Sometimes your mentor can be someone that doesn't even know that you exist. So surrounding yourself with this solid group of people, mentors, and if they have communities, joining those communities. Also, it's important to have supportive friends who are also in business who understand your journey because sometimes family is great, but they don't understand business and that's okay. They're always going to want best for you. What's best for you, but you want to have those people who understand business who are also in your corner. And then another thing I think that's important when it comes to finding your solid tribe is that finding your community. One of the things I think about is that Online, you know, there's social media and there's a lot of comparison that goes on. And some people are like, okay, why is this not happen, happening for me? And one of the things that I do, and I tell my friends this all the time, is like, I'm not a big social media person, but I understand that it's good for a business and it's good for exposure. But I'm also that type of person that's not really worried about what everybody else is doing because I'm trying to do what I need to do. So what I'll do is when I get on social media, I think about, Why is the reason that I'm getting on? And you always want to have a game plan. So when you log into social media, think about it like this. Maybe this will work for you. You think about, okay, why am I wanting to get on social media right now? And it's not a bad thing. Social media is not horrible. It's just how you use it. So sometimes what I'll do is I say, okay, I'm going on social media today to laugh. So I'll go look at a TikTok video because mostly I look at TikTok videos to laugh. And then also I read comments a lot. So I know I'm going to get some good comments and I know I'm going to get some good laughs. So when I just need to take my eyes off the screen and just decompress, I look at TikTok. But I'm like, okay, I'm going on here to laugh. And then sometimes when I'm doing something, what will happen is I need inspiration or I just need to, you know, look and be educated. So I'll say, okay, let me go on social media to get learn. 
And, you know, I go on with a purpose. So you have to have a game plan when you're learning. Another thing about that is when you if you're in a position to where you're comparing yourselves to others, it's so important for you to get into communities because what works for me is I joined uh, this community that I love. It's a paid community, but it's like everyone in that community is in the same industry or they're creating something around the same thing or similar or they're, you know, providing professional services, which is what I'm doing or educating the community online. But in that group, people talk about their, they share their wins, they share their lows, their highs, their successes, their failures, and you kind of get to see their journey. And so when I'm feeling like, okay, I want to go in to be inspired or in a rut in my head right now. I'll go into that community. That's my space. Like I literally would go into that community and I'll get inspired. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so happy that that happened for them. Or then it's like, I'll see where they came from. So you want to think about that in terms of finding your community, finding your tribe, and you want to feel happy for others. That's so important. It's important to feel happy for others because it's not about why isn't this happening for me? You have to think about It's not your time right now. And that's okay, but your time will come. So being a part of these communities is so important. And if that means that sometimes you might have to pay a small fee, if this is something that is mentally bothering you, it's worth it. So I know I went on a rant on that, but I really, really believe that that works. And also when it comes to finding your solid tribe, it's not just about friends or mentors or it's about also making sure that you are building a solid team. You want to build a team of people who are competent, who are teachable, who also take initiative, but who also believe in your vision because that's what's going to take your business so much further. Again, when I talked about earlier The energy and the people that are around us is so important and it's important to even have those people on our team who align with our energy. So knowing yourself, knowing what type of leader you are, knowing what type of people you work best with is so, so, so important. So take your time and build a solid team. And lastly, I will say be patient because deciding to start a business is a long journey. It is not a sprint. It's a marathon. So you have to be patient and you have to know, of course, that this journey is your own. And if you do those things that we discussed today, you know, take some time, take a couple of hours out the weekend or take an hour or so even every week or every day of the week until you get this right to really think about who am I? What do I really want to achieve in my business? Who are some of the people that I would like to be around me while I'm on this journey? What are some of the systems that I need to have in place to make this happen? How do I need to show up in order to make this happen? What risk do I need to take in order to make this happen? So again, when you're thinking about all those things, that doesn't sound like something that happens overnight. That sounds like something that's a journey. That sounds like something that's a marathon. So Be patient and understand that your purpose is yours and your why is yours and that this business journey is your own and that you want to show up every day and you want to thrive because you know that thriving is leading you to that success. So take the time, appreciate the small wins while you're on this journey. Know that it's courageous of you to even start a business. A lot of people, they're scared or they're like, that's not for me and that's okay. But you were one of the chosen ones. As I talked about in my last episode, you have to think like you're the chosen one. Like I was chosen to do this for this community. Once you find that target audience, I was the one that was chosen to do this and to do it differently in this way. That's that competitive edge. So I share these things with you as a reminder that this journey is your own. And for many of us, we are building the blueprint. So remember, you have to be unique. Sometimes there isn't a map to how it is done the way you want it to be done. So think about that. You're creating the blueprint and someone is going to be looking to you as inspiration. Someone is already probably looking to you as inspiration. Someone is already probably looking to you as the blueprint. So keep that in mind. Thank you so much for listening and supporting us as we support you. Please share this episode with someone who can also find value in it. And also be sure to tag us on social media at Black to Business. 
I love you dearly and I am so proud of you for showing up here today, for listening, especially if you listen all the way through. I don't take it for granted that you showed up and that you allow Black to Business to be a part of this journey for you. And I will chat with you next week.